Well, hello and welcome back to Michelle Holden Art, intuitive art journaling, or I like to call it intuitive abstract art journaling, and we are discovering our true art one layer at a time. So in this week's video, I would like uh, to, I had, I've been wanting to do something different, but just as a start and uh, thank you, subscribers, for all of your wonderful comments this week. And I do take those to heart, you know, uh, as much as as uh, I can as uh, moving forward with my own intuitive art process. Um, I'm liking the journal, the, actually not the journal, uh, using the 140-pound uh, Canson watercolor, um, I don't know what they call it, but uh, I'll open the cover in a moment. Uh, so I'll get right back to that. It's 140 pound watercolor paper and I've missed using square. Square is so great um, when you're, when you want to rotate it around and um, really let things happen. So welcome if you are here for the first time. Uh, my name is Michelle Holden and I am the artist behind this intuitive layering process that I've come up with over the past, wow, over four years now I've had this channel and um, starting to build up again as I go in a specific direction. Um, creating my courses, etc. So stay tuned and make sure you hop on uh, my uh, newsletter list and subscribe as um, I have one free and more uh, PDFs, the self-reflection PDF, um, which is like this. It won't always, I'll add different versions of it as I go and develop it. Uh, which will be really cool, but every ver every version will be available. I also have a free resource library on my website. So, maybe. and I'm just thinking in threes: uh, small, medium, large. So I'm going um, a small color shaper, and maybe I would call it a large for this size and ratio. I wanted to use a nice big brush. That's scratchy for some texture. Of course, my favorite mark making tools, which are the China markers, white and black. My little brush, I might use it. Um, of course, I will use pencil just to activate because the surface first, because that's what I love doing. And possibly this as a medium this little brush, maybe, I'm not sure, but I wanted to keep small, medium, and large. The largest being for this is to pull paint across in different ways and keeping it really simple and letting shapes just happen. That's the plan. That's the intention. Okay, so, um, one thing I forgot to do, which is, is fairly important, it isn't that important, but if you don't want bleeding, so this is, this is another tip, I know I've talked about it before, um, I use uh, Liquitex Gloss Medium, and I love it, and I just put it along the tape, and the paper so it stops any bleeding going under that tape. As you can see, I've just used um, the acid-free white tape. It comes in different widths. So that's a narrower one. This is a wider one. I don't even remember having that one, but anyway, it suddenly appeared in the in, in my materials or my uh, on my little cart. And it does tend to thicken up as it gets older, but I'm going to use up what I have. 
And that's another important part of this process. Just to make it easier on us is to use what you have. You don't have to go buy a whole bunch of stuff, even though I love doing that. And I know we all do. But then, wow, I've accumulated so much stuff in my studio. I've had to clean it, down, clean it and reorganize it. Purge. <laughs> But of course, I'm never going to purge anything and I don't buy expensive brushes anymore. It's just, I find that unnecessary. But really cool things from the dollar store, the hardware store, that can make really interesting marks, like an old piece of copper pipe during a bathroom renovation, Lego. So now this has inspired me to go maybe to, um, the Salvation Army store or whatever, you know, get the toys or whatever and find what they have there, which would be cool. Dixie cups for a larger circle. I'm going to try to just stay away from circles. I know, I don't know if I'll be able to just because it's such a thing that I use. And what's something else that I like to use? Oh, once you have your tape run out um this is a really cool thing so you can just put it on your palette spread it out and use it as a stamping tool uh, foam you've seen me use that lids all sorts of cool things but i'm really liking these two and i forget the names of them so subscribers please fill me in on the proper name because I know it was on the package. I ordered them from Amazon. I have no affiliate affiliates yet, but I should be getting that together. And so I left it with the lid off and it plugged up. So I thought, you know, maybe those needles that you use for beading, very, very thin, will fit. And it did, unclogged it, and um, we're ready to go again but I'm gonna to try to remember to put the lids on when I'm done. So large shape, so this is dry now. And I'm going to start large right away. I think I wanna come in with a color shaper, but I'm not going to use the paint right from the bottle. I want to do something with it. So this blue is Cellulene Blue Deep. Um, I've not used it that much, and I don't know if you can see, but it's it's pretty cool. The other one is the turquoise from Liquitex Basics. Unbleached titanium. Yellow oxide and light blue permanent, as well as white and black. And that's it. That's all I'm using. Oh, and of course, I have collage paper over here. So I'm gonna move my tools on the right, uh, just being right-handed, that's where I wanna keep them so they're ready to go. I like to keep my drawing tools as long as they don't roll and hide. And I'll explain my setup here, especially if you're new to this channel. Welcome again, scissors. Here's some collage that I might use, but I'm keeping it really simple. This is that um, very thin encyclopedia um, type of paper, old map that I painted with my color shaper. These are the gestural marks that I made with the encyclopedia paper and see all those diagrams, they're really cool. And you might have caught the little short video on Instagram. This is the deli paper, which is even more transparent. And that's, that's where the magic can happen with the layering. And this was more gestural marks. I was having so much fun. I'm really wanting to use some of this gold and then, of course, I use my jelly plate printer to um, 
create semi-solid papers and then I like to go over them with a pen. Sometimes I do, or with another stamp, stamp of circles. So that's the possibilities today. Now, I'm gonna add some water. I'm gonna add some of this titanium. Now, even though that was a fluid, it's sort of thickened up, but that's okay. That was golden. Okay, then. I'm going to put a little light blue in. Oops. Now, can you see my colors? I'm not sure you can. I'm going to move them over. Yes, that's much better. Okay. There. So this is the light blue. and a little bit of a yellow oxide. Just a little, because I don't want it to be green. But I don't want it to be right out of the bottle. Okay, so we're just going for it. I don't have a plan, as usual, as you know, because that's how this works. All my intention is, is to make big marks. So I'm gonna start with my big color shaper. Sometimes we want to spread it a little more, so we'll add a little water. There. I wanted to activate more energy. So I'm going to see if I can get the odd drip or it to move. So I'm just going to move this over a little. So I can tilt, yes. And while I'm tilting, I might as well show you, that's the Canson watercolor, nine by 12, 140 pound. So let's, okay, we'll just let that happen. And I usually like to score through it or scratch through it with my awl. I'm just having a different start. I've started with black and white before. I've started with so many different colors. Now, so I don't want the yellow or anything else mixing I'm going to dry this. It might take a, a bit, but I'll edit out the drying and I'll see you. I'll be back in a minute. So it's not dry yet, but I also like to use newsprint paper to lift. And sometimes you can get a really cool mark and create the beginnings of some really interesting collage paper. Okay, so now, since that was large, I wanna go medium or towards small using a different tool. I might use that or my smaller color shaper. So we're going to use the same brush to mix. So 
So I want it to be a different, oh, I love this. I love the blue warmed up with this Titan, what was it? Unbleached Titanium. Oh, it's just, okay. And I'm gonna add some of this gloss. It's not the thinnest, so I think it's almost time to move to this brand new bottle. As a matter of fact, I'll do that right now. So I can show you oh, that new. Awesome. Using my teeth. <laughs> Don't do this at home. <laughs> Okay, uh, it's, it's thinner, but not that much thinner because I want the layer to have, you know, not be totally opaque. I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet, which is so amazing, but it's not light enough yet. You see that? So, ouch. So I'm going to just lift that off, put it back over here. I think I will add a little white. And I'm gonna just pull this down here. This is where you can learn about your color. More value though, when you're working in a monochromatic or a limited palette. Um, and I like that because I have too many colors, I just get so overwhelmed and it just becomes so busy. I do believe simple is best. So a limited palette just makes you more creative in using those colors in different different ways and it lets you focus more on the value rather than color. But you, you will have it like a hero color in the end and that's going to be the yellow oxide and of course white and black. So since I went solid fairly neat I'm going to go And I don't want to fill in everything, but I do want to go on the edge. And you see how it's fairly translucent? And we can make it even better by, so you can see that edge. And I just did a little lift with the brayer. I like that, so I don't want to cover all of it. Wow. The little guy works well too. And you see the Brer leaves really interesting texture, uh, physical texture. So. See, I don't want that there. It's too eye catching. Now I have a lot of blue paint. That's okay. We will use it up on some collage <clears throat> with the brayer. Um, like this. And then, let's do a quick demo. So since it's nice and thin, so I'll just build up some really cool layers while I'm lifting. Put that to the side to dry. You can also have your pages or maps or anything like that, um, like these, ready to go. And wow, isn't that something? And you can just uh, put all your leftover paint on it. You can even use deli wrap, have a pile of deli wrap ready to go and have a bunch of transparent. Uh, say if you just did a few strokes, leave them really simple, 
let them dry and then come over them with your gestural marks and you've got some really fascinating um, collage paper. Here's some old maps. So, wow, I think I need to dry this some more and I think I need to lift it. There. So the sun is out and I love it uh, because my studio is south facing, especially in the middle of February in Canada and it's pretty cold outside but at least the sun is out. So next up I think and I never did use the pencil did I? So I'm going to go through just a little section. I would have liked that underneath, so I'll do that. So it's sort of cheating, but it isn't. That would have been my first layer, second layer dark blue, third layer light blue, now the China marker. And I don't want too many lines everywhere. I'm trying to keep it simple this time. So, so far, what do we have? We have light, medium, uh, uh, darker, medium. We don't have a lot of contrast yet using black. So I think I want to bring in some black. But before I do, I think I want to use a piece of this matte collage. And I might even... Come in with a stronger hue of turquoise just to very transparent. I don't want to use it too much. Go over some of that. I might even wait for that. So I'm gonna come in with some black. With my really tiny brush. And I am going to do this. It just flattens out the strokes. So let's dry that.
you see the texture that I like. And it's just spontaneous. And it makes it more transparent. Okay. So I'm lining up one mark to another mark. And I really don't plan, at least at this point, to put a ton of collage. On this piece, I'm trying to get myself to use paint as the layers more. Um, <laughs> I say that now, but my other work that I have behind me, and you might see it every once in a while, is, is like almost total collage. <laughs> so, um, but yet it gets so complicated. And that's why I have to let it sit longer to decide, at least at this point, where to go next. So I need to trim that edge so when I do lift the paint, it doesn't tear. Interesting, I like that. Okay, now we need a little bit of another color. Like I said, and I don't want it to be a green yellow oxide, but So, here we go. I want it to be more orange. Right away, that's, which is cadmium orange hue with the yellow oxide. Not a lot, especially on this size. So let's mix it. more orange, white, nice, and a little blue because it'll just add that, wow, is that ever nice with the blue? And I don't know how much I'm putting on, but just a little bit. I like how transparent it is. I think I want to just do that again. Interesting shape. Let's go back the other way. Let's bring in some stronger orange different areas. Notice it's threes. I find that works pretty well and I'm just going in three different directions like that. Things are getting messy. Hmm. Let's It's too, too thought out. That's okay. That's okay. We're going to let that dry. Ah, that's better. Scratch through it. See, and you can see the blue underneath. Makes it way more interesting. 
Okay. It's still a little tacky, but that's okay because I am going to use, oh, look at this. This is going to be interesting. I had that thought, and of course, those brushes love tumbling. sort of pushes it back. I just want a hint. I don't think I want to go any further with circles, but I really want to use a piece of this bright collage near some orange. Yes. Trim some of it off since it sort of resembles it, right? But I, something caught my eye. Rather than this way, it brings out and connects to those lines. Just sort of cool. And what I'm trying to do is do my pages, because these are just your exploratory pages quicker so there's less chance of overthinking there'll always be you know some of that but I want less of it every time I'm going to trim this okay and I might even sort of muddy, but I sort of like that near the blue. I don't know if I like it too far over. Okay, we're gonna dry that. Okay, now I wanna use this since I've unplugged it or unclogged it. And I'm gonna emulate Better work. Oh, yes, it is, but it's very thick. Let's test it here. Okay, it's sort of working. I'm going to go here. And I just wanted to use a few dots, maybe some lines, but it should come out a lot easier, so I'll have to check and see what the issue is. Of course, I'm going to use odd numbers. We're trying, uh, yeah, odd numbers. Okay, so it isn't working to its full potential. So I will use a white gel pen. For some reason, I'm really liking the white. And see how you can get too scratchy and then it loses the quiet in there. So I'm noticing that in this area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in. I need the dark. Now that isn't the same, but now this is more of a glaze. And you can come in and let's get that blue again. It was this one. So you're leaning deep. Let's add a little bit more here. Because it's the coolness that it's missing. Oh, a little darker. Close. Not exactly a glaze. And even here. I notice that could. Now that isn't a glaze, but I'm going to dab that, like remove some of it or a lot of it. Yeah. 
You can also pull it. That's better. Okay. Notice those dots got sort of messed up. So I'm even going to just go over some of this. Too many dots, so I'm just going to leave those. I'm going to bring that orangey color back in and sort of go over. I'll get a little smudgy, but it's sort of cool. Okay, let's see how the black one's working. Hmm, better. Might be too many dots, but that's it. That's all we're doing. We're gonna let that dry. Okay. So that's pretty interesting. Notice there's white up here, so I wanna just bring a few little marks here. I don't, I want it, I want them very tiny because there's nothing really tiny. And I just wanna bring it around And these are dashes, so they're slightly different. I like to use these too. Okay. Except for a little splash, I think we're done. I'm going to stop ahead of time. I'm just looking for my little brush over here. And where did you go? Oh, you're in the water. All right, here we go. Gonna be a black. That's it. Okay. So we just ended up using two little pieces of collage and one last little. I want that circle to be hidden. So I'm just covering up those marks. Yeah. Okay. Now for the big reveal. Let's see. Oh, it did. See, it's amazing how it still ends up bleeding. But that's okay. Even though maybe I need to put a thicker layer or two layers. That one was better. Such a nice clean line. And as you can see, I do put my newsprint paper underneath and it keeps the next page super clean. And if you notice, I didn't really end up rotating this page uh, a lot, which I just realized. And okay, gotta try to remember to do that next time. Now for this particular sketchbook, I have been taking them out each time. And I like that because then I can tape them on a wall or have a series 
and stay tuned because um, I will be, and if you haven't checked out my other series, um, make sure you do that on my on the channel. Uh, usually they're under mixed media. The, the intuitive art journaling process has been sort of just one at a time, but um, the series is part up to part four on different substrates, and that's where you can go once you've explored enough in your journal. So when you use uh, these fine line makers or whatever you want to call them, um, it's wonderful because it's such a raised uh, uh, texture. It is so cool. Now, I don't know about that one, but, you know, you can come in with a collage, paint over it again. Um, and so that is this one. And I'm even going to take it off as we look at it. So there it is. So it is a little smudgy there, but that's okay. And then it is an eight by eight. I really like it this way. I'm not sure about this line, but I might just come in after and push that back. But you can see the texture here. So I hope you enjoyed, again, a more simple approach using and thinking, uh, or having the intention of big shapes. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and keep following me. Join my email list. Get yourself Reflection PD, which is this. And since it's not in a journal, I will use the prompts and write on the back and want to remember the order of my layers, what my intention was, and saying this affirmation, I trust myself. I am an artist and paint in peace and joy. Layers, big shapes, your colors, opposites, large, small. My intention was to play with big shapes and then your thoughts and feelings or, emotion at, or emotions at the end. And you will have this all on the back. Uh, you can keep these, label them. You can number this, keep it in a binder. Uh, but I like to have everything out and ready. And this does tape to the back. So that's what you can do, even if you don't have an art journal. So I hope you enjoyed this. And I hope it was helpful, and I'll see you in the next video.